In this video, I'm going to show you some interesting statistics regarding the games played by Hans Niemann so far in the 2022 Sinkfield Cup. I'll be looking at the total number of blunders made in these games, how many of these were made by Niemann, and how many were made by his opponent, as well as what types of blunders they were. So first let's define a blunder for the sake of this analysis. We will say that a blunder must shift the computer's evaluation at least one pawn in the opponent's favor. And it must also change the status of the game, that is, the game must go from drawn to lost, from winning to drawn, or from winning to lost for the player making the blunder. So now we just need to define our drawing range, which I have arbitrarily set to anything less than one pawn in any given player's favor, according to Stockfish. Anything outside of that range is considered to be decisive, that is, one player is winning. Okay, so let's look at the total number of blunders made in Neiman's games by Neiman versus his opponents. And we can see that it's pretty close. Nothing surprising here. Neiman made 10 blunders, whereas his opponents made 9. So Neiman is actually looking like a slightly weaker player on average. Now let's examine these blunders by type. First, let's look at blunders which instantly went from a winning position to a losing one. And we see that there are actually no examples of this in any of his games so far, according to our definition of a blunder, anyway. Next, let's look at blunders which went from a drawn position to a losing one. And we see that Neiman only made three of these types of blunders, whereas his opponents made six. So twice as many losing blunders from his opponents. Finally, let's look at blunders which threw away the win and brought the position back into the drawing range. We see that Neiman made seven of these kinds of blunders, whereas his opponents made only three. So it seems that Neiman is getting a disproportionate number of winning positions only to throw them away. Whether intentional or not, you can draw your own conclusions. So do with this information what you will. I realize that this is a small amount of data, so the statistical significance is probably very limited. Maybe someone with expertise in statistics can comment on how significant this is, if at all. What would really be interesting is if someone did this kind of analysis for all of Neiman's games over the board for the past few years. Because if he is cheating, then some kind of statistical anomaly should emerge. And who knows, maybe someone has already looked at this. But anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Consider subscribing to the channel for more chess-related videos like this one.